Hi, I'm Rashonda Kate. This is Real and Raw with Rashonda. And today I'm going to be talking about the time I got sent to the principal's office for assaulting a teacher. So I went to school in high school in the early 90s, and there was a lot of gang activity coming across the country. I grew up in Oklahoma. The gang activity there wasn't as strong as it was on, say, the West Coast but it was a fear that was raising up in people. So my school passed a rule that said no one could wear anything in their hair at all. No bandanas, no bows, no anything. And the intent of the rule was to keep people from signifying their gang affiliation. What's particularly interesting about that is my high school was all white. <laughs> there were about 2000 students there and about 20 of us were black and there was a smattering of other races as well, but it was vastly white and most of those people were not in gangs. This rule was clearly intended to pinpoint the black students at the school. And that's exactly how the rule was enforced. White kids came to school all the time wearing ball caps. The white girls had big bows in their hair. It was early 90s. People were wearing great big bows and they had barrettes and bandanas and nobody said anything to them at all ever. And that infuriated me. I was like, why do people who look like me have this rule enforced and people who don't look like me don't have this rule enforced? So one day I woke up and I decided I am enacting civil disobedience today and I had a high ponytail with a yellow bandana wrapped around it. I couldn't find a yellow one, so I wore this blue one because it matches my shirt. So I went to school with my high ponytail, with my yellow bandana, feeling a little nervous because I didn't know what was gonna happen. And the day went on and not much happened and then we were in an assembly. And so during the assembly, I felt somebody come from behind me and start tugging at my ponytail. I assumed it was one of my friends or at the very least somebody I knew. So I grabbed the hand and they were like, let go of my hand. I did not recognize the voice. And I was like, no, you let go of my hair. And she was like, you need to let go of my hand. And I turned around and I was like, who are you? You need to let go of my hair. And she was like, I'm a teacher. I'm Mrs. So-and-so and you are assaulting me right now. And I said, you are assaulting me. I was sitting here minding my own business and you started yanking something out of my hair. And she was like, you are breaking the school rule. You are not allowed to have this in your hair. And I was like, look around at all of the other people breaking the school rule. And she was like, you have assaulted a teacher. You need to go see the principal. And I was like, fine, I'll go see the principal. I want you to come with me. And that kind of stopped her. She was like, what? I did not mind going to see the principal. He and I were very cool. So I was like, yeah, you come to the principal's office too and you explain how you were trying to rip something out of my hair. So we went down the hall <laughs> and we went to the principal's office and she was talking to him and she was like, this student assaulted me. <laughs> And he was like, really? What's your side of the story, Rashonda? And I was like, I was sitting in the assembly, minding my own business, and she started trying to pull my bandana out of my hair. And then she started going on and on about how I was breaking the school rule. And I pointed out that the rule was not enforced equitably across races. I have no idea what happened to the teacher after that. I know that I had a good conversation with my principal about how this rule was targeted against the black students at school. It was not fair and either enforce it equally across everybody or drop the rule. That was my stance and I lobbied my principal for that. They didn't drop the rule, but they just kind of stopped enforcing it. Nobody really got in trouble for anything anymore. So I left the principal's office that day with my bandana still in my high ponytail, feeling very justified that I had acted on something and I was victorious. So racism was clearly in play there. I mean, the rule itself was a racist rule. The enforcement of the rule was inequitable, but I also was operating in a socioeconomic system where people had good relationships with their school and that it was a good school with good resources and that I even had the relationship 
with my principal that I felt like, yeah, send me to the principal's office. It's going to be fine. I didn't have any fear of him at all. And that's in large part um, because of the groundwork my brother had laid for me by being one of the few black students going ahead of me and the groundwork my mother laid for the both of us lobbying to make sure we were treated the way we were supposed to be treated. All of the black kids at my school did not have the same opportunities my brother and I did um, because they may not have known they needed to lobby to be treated the same way as everybody else. So that's my story of how I was sent to the principal's office for assaulting a teacher. I'm Rashonda Kay. This is Real and Raw with Rashonda.